Okay, who's still here? Okay, great. So, serious suggestions, what are we gonna draw first? Anyone? Somebody suggested a ghost. Character art might be uh, might be a little too complex at this stage, so it'll make something simpler for beginnings. But I will uh, I will draw a ghost. I'm going to have a black canvas and I'm going to make a new layer here new raster layer I always work on a new layer when I start drawing an, ob an object just so I can move it against the background or I can copy it so I think when I'm drawing objects, I'm just going to draw the outline first. And usually I would have reference material, but because I'm drawing a ghost, I don't think that's too complicated. I'm just going to draw like this generic looking thing that will represent the outline of the ghost. Whoops. I have match mode as none. It should be something else than none so we don't fill the entire selection. Yeah, it is a curvy ghost. Maybe maybe uh, she was very thick before she died. So then I'll just use a brush to fix the outline here. Maybe add uh, some frills here. Maybe maybe she was wearing a frilly dress. Yeah, like that. It's waving at us. There we go, I think I've got a pretty nice outline for the ghost now. Maybe I'll make that arm a little smaller. Okay, and then I'm going to use the light and less darken brush here. I think that is just about the right brush size. Actually, I will I will make it a little bigger. I will start shading this ghost. 
And usually I assume that the light source is coming somewhere from the center or the top or, or center top right, like here. So everything on this side is going to be brighter, everything on this side is going to be darker. She says, oops. What are we doing here? Oh yeah, it's because I wasn't erasing the gray pixels, I was painting black over it, so I'll just remake this layer. Promote selection to layer, so this goes is in a separate layer, and then let's delete it from the underlying layer. So that's all black, and ghost is separated to its own transparent layer here. Okay, now let's start shading this little guy. And I'm working on the wrong layer again. There we go. In Painter Pro it's the left mouse button for the brightened brush and the right mouse button for the darkened one. And these frills are gonna have a little bit of shading around them like this. It's dark under the arms and make the brush smaller to make these frills a little more detailed. And then I'll use the push brush to fix the shading so that it kind of tapers up here. I'm kind of painting the shading with the push brush. His top of his head needs to be a little brighter. Okay, and then select none. Let's make a new layer to make the eyes. I think I'll just do this where it's just going to be two holes and then I'll use the push brush again to create some um, anti-aliasing on the edges so I'm going to set the Opacity to 50%. Removes the jadedness. And that bit on the under the armpit is a little too dark, so I'll brighten it up a little. Okay, what else does the ghost have then? Or are we done with this thing? Is this good enough? Not sure what you mean by uh, jack-o'-lantern esky mouth, but 
Hmm, a glow glowing mouth would be actually glow. I mean, glowing eyes would be a nice idea. I might actually do that. I'll just. Uh, make its negative color so it's white and then I will lessen the contrast so that it's a little darker actually I'll just use brightness because that's the tool you're supposed to use for it and then I will go to adjust hue and saturation and colorize and maybe this is a nice shade Orange eyes, okay. So now I'm going to show a neat trick to make something glow. Like, so I have these two, this uh, these two eyes on the separate layer. So I will duplicate this layer, and then I will blur the new layer. Let's see how that looks. That's a little bit of a uh, glow to the eyes. I think it'll look better if we actually make it brighten the surroundings like that. Make change the layer effect to screen. And because I don't actually want that glow to go into the void, like that's not gonna be part of the sprite, so easy way to delete that those pixels is to just go to the layer that has the my main body of the ghost in it and select with the magic wand the surrounding area and go back to this glow layer and delete it and then we can just do what we want with the with the background so I'll just uh, dig up background color from here do it like that and I will merge all the layers now that I'm done with this and I have the Wolfenstein 3D palette saved in the uh, under my palettes so I will just load it and uh, well, that's if you want to use the Wolfenstein 3D palette. Maybe you don't. You might fix some of the things afterwards that happen with the reduction to 256 colors, like what happened to these eyes. You might find some intermediate color to make that bit look a little better there we go this actually looks like a kind of an excited ghost like it's really happy to be dead it's just can't wait to go through walls maybe it's a ghost of a dead child or something Wolf 3D guy says you should draw legs of a Nazi I'm not sure what, like, do you mean jack boots? Right, so uh, 
What are we gonna draw next? Suggestions, please. very wide variety of suggestions so uh, loudspeakers or turkey or chandelier I think I might try a uh, chandelier or columns no columns might be a generally useful thing something that you might actually use in a map. So I think I'm gonna draw a column. I'll make this uh, maybe a proper Roman style column. New layer. And uh, this time I'm going to enable a grid so that I can see where I'm doing things. I'm going to make this grid 16 by 16. I can see where the center point is, where the quarters are and everything, but I'm not going to snap to it. I'm going to remove snapping. It's just a guideline for me. Okay, so first things first. I'm going to take the ellipse tool, use anti-alias, so I'm probably going to start by drawing the imaginary base of the of the pillar of course depends on it, what kind of perspective you are drawing it from but the Wolfenstein 3D perspective means that the it's probably gonna be somewhere around this size or maybe maybe it's even flatter. Like like this. And I'll just color that in. I'll copy it before I move on from the selection and then I will select and make a rectangle from halfway through the heights of the uh, ellipse that I drew. And I will color that in with the same color as the ellipse itself and select none and then I will use the brighten slash darken tool to add a little bit of shading again I imagine that the light comes from center top left somewhere here There we go. And then I'm going to paste by pressing Ctrl plus E the uh, base ellipse on top of the thing I just made. I'm going to make it a little brighter. Actually, before I do that, I might just copy this on the other side flip it just so I can do this okay so I'm copying this ellipse again to here except I'm going to make this one darker because I assume the light source is going to come from somewhere higher up like on a 
ceiling light. And then I'm going to draw a smaller ellipse inside of this one. I'm going to make this on a new layer, in fact. And I will color it a brighter gray. Copy it to the other side. I'll just hide the other other stuff for the time being so I can see what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna fill in the area between these two smaller ellipses with the same bright grey. And actually I'm gonna chop off an edge from there. Narrow it a little bit. Okay, now and then I'm just gonna repeat the same thing I did before. Brighten it, darken it, shade it a little bit. And I might just uh, create a nicer effect here by adding a secondary smaller light source to the edge here, like this. Makes it look a little more three-dimensional, I reckon. If you add make this effect too, too extremely, it's going to start looking like ice or glass. And then I'm just going to add some grooves to this pillar to make it look more interesting. So I will select one pixel wide lines like this. Spaced out by one pixel out as well. You know what, there's an easier way to do this. Scratch, scratch that. I'm just going to use effects, texture effects blinds and I'm gonna use the width of maybe let's try four pixels uncheck horizontal light from left slash top make it make that a little smaller maybe let's try three four or five. I think I'll just roll with two very small grooves. Okay, it's not the prettiest pillar in the world, but I think it'll do. Now I'm just gonna combine these two layers I've got here. Choose the top layer, merge it down. So we've got this as a single layer. So now we've got partially transparent bits 
and uh, that's not gonna work with the transparent um, transparent background in Wolfenstein 3D so we've got to separate the visible pixels from the invisible pixels very clearly so what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna pick the magic wand and use opacity as the match mode set it to a tolerance of 100 click on this visible area for the pillar and invert the selection delete everything outside of it invert the selection again Let's see we've still got those partially visible pixels inside of our selection so how are we gonna get rid of them I'm simply gonna use the fluid fill pockets with uh, blend mode of lighten color black match mode none so it's gonna fluid everything within the selection there we go that fills the edges with the black color or we could just if we are not happy with that we could just uh, create a new layer pick whatever color we want maybe maybe just the normal gray color and then just gonna color this part this layer that is underneath our pillar and the da now we don't have invisible pixels or partially transparent pixels anymore then all we have to do is take the transparent transparent color and replace the background with it merge all layers into one and let's load the wolf 3d palette again There we go. We got a nice pillar and a nice little ghost to go with it. See you later. I'm not gonna go myself, but a uh, few few watchers are departing now. Um. I made the rightmost edge bright as a secondary s light source. It might be a little too extreme of an effect, actually. So I might just I might just do this. It's not as stark. In fact, I might manually fix up these bits too. It looks a little off. I, th I think that to carry off a more round shape the bottom row needs to be more needs to be wider. I'll delete, delete an individual pixel from here too. a little better okay so what are we going to scribble next let's pick something interesting let's pick something more challenging or or at least useful Do you mean a chain gun like as an item that you can pick up? Like as an item sprite? Yes, yeah, serpents, I I know you've gotten your pillar fix now.
Okay, so in this case, I think that I might just I might just look at references of chain guns. Just to get an idea of what I'm actually drawing here. That's probably something along the lines of what I'm going to be drawing. So a chain gun. New layer again, and then let's just start making the outline for our gun. Starting with the stock. Then the rear body. And I guess this is the cylinder part. That's a little too big. Let's just shrink things down a little bit here. Just so it just about fits. Okay. And that's the barrel part. And I think the trigger can go somewhere here and yeah I think that's it now we can start making a more detailed version of this thing actually I'm just gonna blend that to the black background and uh, Use the paintbrush tool with the left and right buttons to switch between colors. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw one barrel and once I'm done with it, I'm just going to copy it over. Just fixing the shape a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to start by making the barrel. Brighten slash darken brush, just long, confident brush strokes here. It doesn't have to be even, it can 
be a little brighter at one point and a little darker at another to have a little bit of a metallic glow to it as well as the metallic texture. Obviously the bottom again is darker and the top is brighter. Copy it, Control E, maybe I'll just flip it around so it doesn't look nearly as much of a copy when you're comparing them. And let's create the rings that enclose the thing. Brighten slash darken brush is it's very useful. I just um, almost always use it for everything, even non-metallic objects or colorful objects. I just create them as a gray mass first and shade it and then I color them afterwards. Copy this ring so that I can get all of them. I'm not going to copy the design exactly, but it's going to be pretty close. And then this object, I think I'm going to going to make like a make it a little more angled, so I'm, it's going to look like it's got eight edges, the middle surface is flat, and then you've got these angled surfaces on the sides. Just to outline the edges here, I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight here. And here too. There, that looks looks like there might be an edge in there now. And this bit, I'm going to make this circular, so it's going to have smooth shading. Make it a little darker, so it doesn't look as metallic. Maybe a bit, a little bit of shading because it's behind this larger block of the gun, the larger part. So a little bit of a shading behind it, maybe a little brighter on this side because this plane is exposed. And uh, then I'm going to select these wooden bits. I want to make these into wood. And a pretty easy way of making mo uh, making wood is just again using the lighter slash darken brush and long brush strokes randomly almost. You can just keep going so that you can have a little bit of definition behind between the grains. So. If you want to add more definition, now you can use the brighten brush. Go along the same path a few times to highlight those grains. And then I'll add some shading to the uh, overall shape of these wooden blocks. So this bottom edge is going to be dark because that's against the light source. And the right side too. Whereas on the contrary, the top side is going to be a little brighter. The left side too. Except this bit might be a little dark because it's underneath this larger block of thing. Then I'm just going to colorize it 
with maybe that I don't actually know what the I'll check the palette so I'll pick something from the wolf 3d palette and I'll just manually and just color balance manual color correction and pick the source color whoops pick the source color and oh yeah I should probably just open up this color that I picked here into a selection so I'll just temporarily make a new image with the color on it so I can click on it okay color balance manual color correction pick the color of the pick the average color from the image and then right click on the target color and that should bring it pretty close to the Wolf 3D palette Right, they're gonna disappear back there. Okay. Maybe I will darken this little bit here. And this too, to distinguish it from the actual barrels of the gun. And also I'm um, stupid because I combined the layers so I'll have to kind of separate the black stuff from the actual gun now. But that's whatever. That's just that's easy for me. I'll do it right now. That little bit there can be a little brighter. Actually, we should probably make those barrels stick out from the forwardmost disc, so I'll just shrink the size of the actual gun a little bit. And these should be transparent. There we go. Maybe a little ejector part. I wonder where it would go. Probably somewhere around here. wonder how to represent it. Maybe I will just use the dark grey box here. Yes, that that looks okay, I think. I'll add a few more details here and there, like a few seams. I'll just select long lines of pixels and darken them a little bit. Mm, 
I'm not sure how I would integrate the front grip. My mail, I'll use this tool to just move things back a little bit and Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how a front grip would look like, so I'm just gonna. Do, no, I'll, I'll probably not do it because that requires creativity and that takes time. <laughs> Unless you can uh, link me a nice picture that will give me an idea. I'll make the shading a little less dramatic here. Maybe a few bolts here and there, like Here and here and here and here and here and then I will, on the contrary, brighten these these little things. These bolts are shiny. Might add the. No, I, I think that that'll that'll do for bolts. Let me look at the. Okay, so forward grip is just a real simple thing like that. I'll just copy it. I mean, I don't think it's gonna fit this gown because obviously this this part is gonna be spinning. There's no way to attach anything to it unless you add like a big thing there. So I don't I don't think we're gonna be adding a forward grip. I think on the contrary, I might add a carry handle. That might be something a chain gun might have. And just like that, I'm using existing pixels that I've uh, already drawn to create something new. Let me just look at how carry handles work. Carry handle will just be a little thing like this. Usually they are angled as well. Something along this these lines anyway. Okay, that's a fine enough carry handle by my standards. And I would I think that I will also add a bullet chain hanging from the other side. So I will use yellow for that. Darker yellow to make the bottom. 
and in fact I'm going to separate this thing into its own layers. I'm going to select all, modify, select color range, pick the purple with a tolerance of 1, softness of 0, and subtract it from the color range. That leaves me with the selection of just the chain gun, not even these bits between the barrels or or here between the trigger finger. Okay, so then selections promote selection to layer and then I'll just delete the chain gun on the background layer and show the promoted layer again and I'm gonna create a new layer and paste my bullet there so see now this new layer is behind the chain gun so we can freely move the bullet chain around as we as we wish I'll make it a little a little darker I think maybe a little more of a copper color less green more red And I'll just smush these pixels together actually. You're not going to be able to see them. And I'll add a little bit of shading so that the gun is shadowing the bullet chain. And then I'll just combine all the layers together. I might do a few little touch-ups afterwards, like I think that I will just move this part down a little bit. Maybe this whole thing. No, I think it loses a little bit too much of the definition that I have given it. It's better without that chance. Well, I think that's uh, that's a pretty fine looking chain gun. I don't know what you guys think. see how it works if we use it on the Wolf 3D palette. Looks pretty good, just need to fix a few few colors. I'm just gonna undo loading the palette and give these bits a little bit more color. So add your hue saturation, increase saturation of these bits. make these things a um, little bit more of a of the orange that is found on the Wolf 3D palette. Uh, let's see how it works now. That's a little better. Oh, we've still got these bits turning into gray, so let's increase the saturation on it, so make it more of the Less of less gray and more of the wooden color on the Wolf 3D palette again. Um, let's see what happens to it when we load the palette now. That's pretty good. The palette doesn't disagree with this. Okay. Now, if anybody is still watching and interested, I can keep drawing. Or I can call it a day on this session. Anyone have any requests for drawing ideas?
a table, just a regular table or a particular kind of table. Okay, wooden table, that's gonna be easy. In fact, I might just make the background already the transparent color for this. Make a new layer, pick this wooden color, enable the grid. And maybe table is not quite at eye level, of obviously, so it's gonna probably be a little bit below, so it's gonna be below the center point. There we go, and That'll be the top surface of the table, and this will be the side surface. It will be the same color in darker. That's fine. And then let's uh, imagine that the perspective radiates from the center point. So imagine drawing a line from here to here, and that's you see, that's where the table is going to disappear. I'm not going to actually draw the line, but I remember roughly how it's going to taper off. Then I can just delete the other side and copy it over again. create a new layer and I, I'm putting it under this table layer, the, the flat surface of the table. I'm going to make the legs. One leg here, another leg here. In fact, I might just delete one surface from there. I don't think the perspective distortion is that um, radical, so in fact I'm just gonna draw one leg for starters, I'm gonna shade it smaller brush on top of the, you know, the table itself is gonna cast a bit of a shadow, so I'm gonna use a bigger brush to make a gentle darker bits just underneath to make it clear that this is underneath. And then copy that here. And then to make the back legs, I think maybe around here. I'm going to make the back legs a little darker, just so you can definitely tell that they're they're behind. Besides the the side of the leg that you're going to see when you're looking at the table, you know the the side of the rear legs, the legs that are further away from your perspective. Uh, well, that's not going to be the side that is covered by light, assuming assumingly coming from the ceiling or anywhere else in the room. So it's just going to be like that. And then let's go back to the top surface. I'm just going to select all. I'm going to click on just this table alone. And again, use the same technique with light and less dark and brush with a size of one pixel. With very wide confidence strokes.
and fix it up a little bit afterwards because I've messed it up in the process a little bit just to make a clear difference between the side and the top of the table. And then try to highlight the the grains a little bit, adding adding contrast between them. I might do the same to these um, legs now. I'll use a more gentle effect. I'll make the light and less darker brush only fifty in its opacity. angle your brush strokes a little bit so that it's not completely straight. Now adds a little bit of uh, natural definition to it. Again you can fix it afterwards to make sure that the actual shading remains. You can clearly tell these are well maybe not as clearly as I meant it to be but these legs are meant to be cylindrical. There we've got a wooden table. I mean, actually, we could just add like a bit of wood as a support because if I was building a table, I would probably add a bit of wood here. So I'm just gonna actually create that on a new layer and just copy an area, existing area of the wood I've drawn here. Copy it over a few times. So notice I've created a little discontinuity between the two blocks that I copy. So I'm just going to use the push brush to blend them over. Yeah, now it's pretty seamless. And I'm going to darken it a little bit with gamma correction. I will actually use the lighter and less darken brush to darken the top edge since that's going to be hidden underneath the table. Might actually make that um, a little bigger. Actually, I will also make these edges right next to the legs a little darker. Just those will be more obscured by light. I'd say that's a pretty wooden table as far as very simple wooden tables go. Let's see how it works with the Wolf 3D palette. Not very well. Like we need to adjust the coloring a little bit. Let's undo load palette and select our table. 
and I picked these two colors from the Wolf 3D palette to so I can colorize it with them. So I'll just use the color blend mode with the fluid fill tool and with the uh, wooden palette color and a match mode of none so it floods the entire area I've got selected. In fact this is the this is the brighter color of the wood. I also picked the second color from the palette. So I'm gonna s modify the color range of the selection so I'll remove the bright areas from the selection so I'm only left with the dark areas because I'll color the dark areas separately so it matches the darker color found on the palette. I'll add a little bit of softness to it. You can see the selection shrinks there. Okay. And then I'll just right click the color it like that. Let's see if it agrees with the palette now. Yep, that's that's a lot better looking. It's still a little weird but I guess it's a useful demonstration of how you can force things to use use the palette that you you're wanting them to use and especially if, if like in some cases you've got brighter colors or brighter shades of one color but you don't have darker shades you you have to use a different shade for the darker bits and uh, this is a bit of a case like that I guess Okay, anything else? Anything else you guys want me to, you know what? Uh, okay. What else would I put there instead of the statue? I don't know. Um, Reese Vastica maybe or... I, I don't really know. Do you have any ideas? Hmm. I'll just drop by Discord for a moment to see if people have any ideas. maybe something more challenging this time something that really tests my skills Just feel free to suggest anything. I'll, I'll pick something that will be generally useful. Riveted wall, is that like bolts on a metallic wall?
Okay, that's that's not a bad idea. So this will be a wall tile. A riveted wall with pipes going on it. First of all, I'm just going to create the seams where it's going to be fused. I will flip that around and add a little bit of shading to each of these plates. I'll just make them completely white and I'm just going to decrease the contrast of this image so that the shading is not as dramatic and then I will create a new layer where I will I'll try to make some kind of metallic effect so I'm just going to actually hide the background layer so I don't accidentally confuse what I'm editing and float the new layer with grey and change the layer mode to overlay take the light and slash darken brush again and then just wildly start stroking all around everywhere scratched metal or something metallic texture Just make sure that, you know, if you see a darker spot, you just start going over that one a little bit more and then just keep going randomly. I could do this with a plugin, but like not everybody has plugins and, you know, that's just the easy way out. This is this is all about learning the handcraft of pixel art. So I'll show how to do things the hard way. Then I'll just use Le uh, right click to add darkness as well try to keep it somewhat even I will add a little bit of, um, I think everybody will have this effect, motion blur. And then I will sharpen it. And then I will mess it up again by going to, I will adjust the brightness levels. I do also think most image editing software has something like this. And then just keep going up and down. Up and down. there's too much dark just lift these things a little more up too much white just move them down 
try to make it a little more uneven. And that's uh, somewhat of a corrugated metal look. Then I'm going to add a second layer. This will also be an overlay layer. And I will take the fluid fill tool and I will pick gradients. You should also have a gradient tool. And you should have a gradient from black going to white. And this depends on if you want the texture to tile, but when you're using this tool to set repeats and pick the angle, you can pick the angle as 45 degrees. I can pick three repeats because you see, if you imagine you're moving from here to here, the bright, bright, uh, brightest bit of the gradients, when it continues to the next texture, is going to start from the middle. It starts from the middle here as well. If you had more repeats, well, that would break the cycle. The bright bit here would not continue here. You could see the tiling. But again, if you do this now, you're going to have two bright areas, bright pixels that continue over from the other side. But I think I'm going to just use three. And float the whole area. Make the effect a little less dramatic by decreasing the visibility of the layer. There we go. If you wanted to, you could try something like this, where each plate has slightly different shading. You could add negative image. You could just uh, negate the color so it flips the shading around. So now these plates look very separate. And if you look at what's going on here, that's what's going on here. Okay, and then the rivets. I will create a new layer for them. And start with um, gray color. Brightens less darken. Something like that. That'll do. And I will use the grid as my guideline in adding the bolts at even length. So I'll just temporarily move that over there and copy paste with Ctrl C and Ctrl E to make a line of rivets. And in fact, I'll copy them another. No, I think I, I think. I will make them a little more densely packed, two pixels closer to each other. And like that, I'll try to center them. As well as I can. Now I've got my rivets on a separate layer and I will apply a shadow with, I'll just show again, FX 3D shadow, drop shadow. And assuming the light source is coming from up there, you might make it 
vertically drop down by one, one pixel and horizontally shift to the right by one pixel. When you're adding a shadow, you want to make sure that the color of the shadow, how it appears, that it's not going to blur or blend into the background, but it's not going to lose the definition of the bolt or whatever object you're adding a shadow to either. In some cases you might add a little bit more of a blur so that the object that is casting shadow will re retain its definition. It will stay in focus. Okay. And then I'm going to add the pipes. Two big pipes going along here, I think. I'll just draw one pipe at a time. And again with the light and or darken brush. If your hand is not as steady as mine, you can just do like this and draw uh, shorter bits and then either stretch it or copy it. And if there's a little bit of a discontinuity like that, you can just flip it around, copy it again, flip it around, then you can just copy it. Actually, we don't need to, but whatever. You can add a little bit of uh, grainy definition, metallic definition to it by setting the density of the brush to maybe just a half or 25 so now you're drawing a darker shade with the darkness less light and brush and it's adding a little bit of a definition like that maybe it looks slightly more metallic to me I don't know maybe all all pipes are made of corrugated metal or something I don't know I might actually make this pipe a little darker. Always use gamma correction personally. And then I will copy it again. And I think it could go here. I think that could be a little lower as well. Maybe closer together. like that. I think I might have one pipe branching off down. So I'll rotate a copy of it and it'll be going down here. And push brush is a nice tool for just working with pixels so I'm just gonna set the opacity to 100, the size to 1 pixel. So then I'm just going to drag pixels like this. So I don't have to keep using the color dropper to select the different colors. I can just do this. It's a lot faster. In fact, you can kind of add a little bit of bend here you want to. I'll disable the background and other layers for the time being so they don't confuse me. I'm already confused enough.
and then usually when you have a T junction like this in a pipe it's gonna be made of separate parts so hold on what's going on there no it's just just my eyes lying to me okay so I'm going to create a little part that is thicker than the rest of the pipe has shading on the sides and actually let's just once again disable all these other layers so I can see what I'm doing here That's where the junction begins and ends. In fact, I'm going to select these junctions and I'm going to make them cast a little shadow. I will make the shadow come from directly underneath. Just so that the, uh, the you know the bit that's just right next to the pipe, between you know between the pipe and the junction, because this, there's this large object that's going to obscure light a little bit. It's also going to create definition, so this junction is clearly a part of its own. So I think that's generally what you'll find when you're looking at edges or intersections between smaller and larger objects okay and then we're just gonna add a shadow for this whole thing and I, but before we do that I might just add a copy of this um, chunks and bits to the bottom because Imagine the uh, pipe isn't going just nowhere, there's going to be some kind of uh, thing that's going into. There. Okay, now I'm gonna... I've got this pipe layer selected. Right. And let's do the 3D shadow again. With maybe two pixels vertically one pixel horizontally or two yeah that really gives it a tri three dimensional effect I'm going to create the shadow in a l new layer so I can work on it afterwards and see because we don't have pipe beyond the picture the shadow cuts off here, so I'm just gonna copy this bit over here, so the shadow continues all the way. There we go. If you feel like it, you could give the background a uh, different shade of color, like you could add a new layer here. Just pipes are here, so you're gonna have the new coloring layer just between the pipes and the 
metal wall and then maybe maybe the traditional id software metal color which is for some reason a bright teal purple oh sorry turquoise could also be screen uh sorry multiply or color color legacy i think i'll go with the multiply effect it looks a little better with the No, actually that might obscure the shadows too much. It's so dark you can't see the shadows anymore. I think I'll go with color, color legacy. And in fact, let's see if if we moved it below the rivets, now the rivets would stand out too. It would make it look a bit more interesting. Let's just see how this would look like with a Wolf 3D palette. Merge all the layers, palette, load palette. So yeah, it agrees pretty nicely with the Wolf 3D palette. There's just a little bit of definition loss there in the in the shading, but it's not that bad. Maybe we could make it make the background a little darker with a multiply layer on top of the color layer that is just not fully in effect just 50 percent transparency because i think they have a little bit more of the darker shades of this teal color yeah that looks a little better i think I press Ctrl Shift C to copy the whole image along with. Whoops, actually that doesn't work in that mode. Never mind. Um, talking garbage. It's only when you're in uh, this mode where you have all these different layers. If you just want to copy the image, the whole image, instead of just one separate layer, like if I just press Ctrl C, Ctrl V, it would just copy that one layer I had. If I press Ctrl Shift C and Ctrl V, now it copies the whole thing. So, for example, I want to see the difference if I had no color at all. Now let's see, palette, load palette, Wolf 3D palette, image palette, load palette, Wolf 3D palette. Or maybe maybe I think the teal is nice after all, but I don't I don't like the um, grain effect, so I'm just gonna disable the grain effect. I'm just gonna have a, a smooth gradient here. Copy that, and let's see how that looks like if we load the palette. Oops. Maybe that's not doing what we're supposed to be doing right now. Okay, let's see. Image palette, load palette. There. I would venture to say this looks, this actually looks a little cooler than, uh, than the one with the grainy effect. It just depends on your taste. How do you want to represent metal? And of course, you might save this image as a source file so you can go back to edit it later with all these layers. Anyway, taking requests now for maybe somebody who has not requested something yet. What sprite shall we work on next?
Any suggestions welcome. I will take any challenge that you throw at me, even if it's literally a platypus riding a skateboard playing a trumpet. <laughs> Any suggestions welcome. So I'm not sure if my connection is dropping or If anybody's hearing the chats, a bleeding tree. Why not? Anyone else have suggestions? I guess I'll do a bleeding tree then, because nobody else is adjusting anything, so... Okay, bleeding tree. New layer. This will close, closely mirror the same thing which I did before. New layer, and I'm going to pick... Um, in fact, I'm just going to dig up the Wolf 3D palette so I can work within that. There, quick Google search with Wolf 3D palettes, and we've got what we're looking for. Okay, bleeding tree. I will start by drawing the main trunk of the tree. And I will use the posh brush. Um, I'm using it very often because it's a very effective tool. I'm setting the hardness to 100, size to whatever opacity to 100 and then I can just click on whatever area I want to draw from and then start dragging. It e even works on the transparent background so like I drag from transparent area it will just drag transparency to wherever I'm moving it. This, this will be some kind of mutated tree, I guess. It's gonna have like some interesting anatomy. Maybe it's uh, infected with Tiberium or something. It's a Tiberium tree. Who knows? It's some kind of Lovecraftian horror. It's bleeding for some reason. I make it twist around like this. Right. And then I will add some uh, shading 
again with the same old trusty light and less darken brush. Always assuming by default that the light is coming a little bit more from the top, a little bit more from the left. Not completely. Happy little trees. I should sound happier when I'm doing these streams anyway. I probably sound like some fucking Terminator. I'll be back. That's except it's probably not a happy little tree because it's 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 bleeding. It's probably in great pain and it's unable to do anything about it. It's gonna live for hundreds and hundreds of years and just nobody's gonna put it out of its misery. Except maybe a lightning strike or forest fire. Just begging to be killed. A conscious tree. Maybe it's got a brain inside. Maybe all these little branches represent some kind of synaptic connections. There's a little bit of brain in each branch and every time some kid comes and uh, pulls the branch off the tree it just internally screams in agony as it part of its body and soul is removed, separated. Paint a face on the tree. Well, I might make some room for the face, then I I'll maybe add like a. Actually, let's just let's just move this entire bit here, and let's use the push brush with. Push push brush like like this to. Just fuse it with the, with the rest. Whoa, that's looking up. That's looking really Chernobyl. Be careful with the push brush if you're using an opacity other than 100 and hardness other than 100 because you might create semi transparent pixels around your image, which of course you will have to manually sort out later. Because Wolf 3D naturally does not support particle transparency, you're gonna have to use the purple color. There's gonna be some kind of mound here where tumor-like structure <laughs> where we're gonna draw a face. Because Wolf 3D guy wants me to draw a a face on this this thing. There's some lumps here and there. And There we go. Unhappy little tree, or un unhappy big tree. Just waiting for somebody to kill it. Perhaps uh, the thing inadvertently try to assimilate uh, into a tree or assimilate a tree as part of itself but instead got trapped inside the tree it has no mouth but it must scream happy little trees I 
I should probably be describing what I'm doing, so I'm just using the light and less darken brush with a brush size of one pixel to add some grains. However, remembering that I don't want to erase the lighting too much. Like if I started painting light grains on the right side too much, I would just be erasing the uh, shading that I made for the tree. So you want to be mindful of that. Don't, you know, everything in moderation. Okay. So how am I gonna do this face? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. Add a little eyeball there, and and another here. I don't know. Mouth. It goes like that, and maybe maybe there's like some teeth go going horizontally like that. That looks pretty horrifying. And some Halloween shit right there. And that's on a new layer, so I'm just gonna go back to the tree layer. I'm going to make it so these eyes are a little sunken in there, indented into the tree, so I'm gonna add some shading to them. And this too. Maybe I will add a red, little red blip in here to make it look evil. It's an evil Terminator tree or something. And then let's let's do the bleeding. It's, it's, this tree is very angry. It's, it's been screaming in internal agony for hundreds of years, and on top of that, it's on its period, so it's, it's gonna be very pissed off. It's gonna eat you if you come anywhere near it. And I'm just to, if you ca didn't notice, I'm doing the blood on a new layer. Maybe it's bleeding from his eye too. It's Husband punched it. There we go. Happy little trees. Everybody needs a friend. Even this tree is never gonna have one. I'm going to change the um, mode of the uh, blood layer into multiply. So now it kind of the blood blends into the background and follows the shading of it. I might tone down the effect of. Uh, actually, I might add a few more pixels here. Okay, and on the very top layer I'll add some leaves. Yeah, he would, he would be advised to look for some new friends if uh, his previous friends did this to him. I can imagine like running into a tree like this and just uh, just seeing somebody's leg like a like a boot sticking out from there and just a bunch of blonde going going down.
Okay, now those I've got a bunch of leaves on the new layer. Uh, I'm just gonna be I'm I'm gonna be lazy here. I'm just gonna use a 3D effect layer. I'm gonna use a bevel effect and see if I can add a, automatically add a little bit of shading with that. Yeah, that that's that's fine, I think. I'm going to duplicate this layer. And then I will brighten up the new layer. And then I'll just I'll just move around the leaves on this uh new layer so that it's it's as if there's a second layer of new leaves even though there there isn't. It's just same old fucking leaves copied, but no, no one's gonna notice that. There, but let's just move this shit around quickly, like like this. We get lots of lots and lots of new leaves. In fact, I think these are a little too bright. I'll just brighten both of the three layers. Oh, sorry, the leaf layers, not the tree layers. Okay, and I'll add, I'll still add it. Actually, no, let's undo that. Okay, now I'm gonna combine these two leaf layers. So this is what I've got. I'm gonna duplicate it, hide the original layer, and move it behind the tree so that it's here. I'm gonna darken it even more like that and then just once again move stuff around a, a, a little bit so that delete those pixels, lose pixels. I hold control uh, control while I'm using the selection tool to decrease from the selection. Okay, now let's see, let's enable the top layer, so now we've got some leaves behind as well. Uh, in fact, I'll pick the top leaves and use a shadow with them, use shadow. Um, horizontal displacement, one pixel, uh, vertical displacement, uh, Mm, three pixels, two pixels maybe, and not that much blur, a bit more transparency. Okay, I'll I'll draw a uh, wolf three wolf three I'll I'll draw a um, worm coming from the other eye. So now I'm just gonna. Use the magic wand to select the invisible area of the uh, you know surrounding the actual tree by by clicking on an empty area on the tree layer, and then I'm going to go to the shadows that I just cast. I cast them on a new layer for this reason and delete them. The shadows do not get cast out of nowhere. So now the shadows get cast on the tree trunk itself, but not beyond the actual area of the sprite. Okay, so worm. I'll create a new layer for the worm. And in fact, I will use this color here for the worm maybe let's shift that pixel around a bit 
and then I'm just gonna make some tiger stripes on this worm. And shade it a little bit. I don't know if that looks good. It might be too thick. I'll just remove one layer of pixels. Maybe add a little bit of a shadow with a displacement of one vertically. There's the worm. Okay. Let's see if this agrees with the palette. does pretty well. A uh, few bits here and there that turn into grey, particularly these ones. I'm just gonna modify selection, select color range, select this similar color with a softness of toler tolerance of 15, softness of 25, and I will pick a color from the palette and colorize this area with its uh, maybe that okay image palette load palette move 3d there we go okay bleeding tree done Anything else? You can literally give me the, any kind of challenge to do. Anything you want me to draw. Let's see if there's anyone else interested in uh, in the stream. A, a what? A, a magnetophone. Let me just Google what the hell that is. Oh, I see. You want me to do this? Okay, 
so magnetophone is this gonna be like a thing that is on a wall or is it going to be a gadget that sits separately like a sprite okay so it's gonna be a sprite all right let's see how well are we going to approach this problem I think the first thing that I will do is draw the disk that represents the, the tape I will do it on a new layer. Okay. I will use a light gray color for it. I will shrink the selection by two pixels. Delete the area within it. And then just I don't need to overcomplicate this, I'll just try to estimate that there's a 120 degree diff difference between these two sides. Just copy it, flip it. Uh, actually, move this bit a little bit more to the side. Okay, uh, there we go. And then add a little disk to the center. Copy it and Actually, I'll, I'll tweak this texture a little bit first. It doesn't quite look right. I'll thicken these bits a little bit. It's thicker is better. In fact, I'll just copy it to the other side to ensure that it is identical. this thing between them <laughs> whatever it is and then I cl create a new layer for the tape and this side is going to have more tape Contract the selection by one pixel, fill it with dark gray. Contract the selection by one pixel, fill it with black. So now it kind of appears as if there are multiple stacked tapes rolled up. Yes. Yes, exactly. Stacked planes. This is quite quite a challenge actually. It's always interesting to make something that you've never tackled before. So the tape would go from here and enter here. And go from here to 
here. And then the whole gadget is obviously going to be attached to some kind of box, so I'm just going to have the grid as a little helpful measurement tool for this, uh, create a new layer and draw a box approximately that shape around it. It's not completely centered as I just noticed, so gotta keep that in mind as I'm editing this. Might be interesting to use wood. At least as part of the uh, part of this thing. So I'll just I'll take a Actually, I'll, I'll not take shortcuts, I'll, I'll do wood the hard way, just for all those people who do not have fancy filters to do it with. So just confident long strokes, back and forth, stroking that wood. Back and forth, back and forth. There we go. Ain't that a nice... Nice wooden effect. <laughs> okay, let's color it with an actual wooden color. Now let's move back to this layer. Let's make this this bit metallic, I think. This is gonna be metallic. A little bit of shading there. Just doing this by hand. It's just a tiny bit. You can just do it by hand with the light and slash darken brush. Uh, maybe a little bit of shininess. Return some of the glow to the edge. You have PP? Pee -pee? What? What? What are you talking about in the chat? I don't. I don't even have any idea. But anyway, uh, let's add a little knob here. I will not use the circle for that. I'll just manually make something approximately circular in shape and I will also make it on a new layer I will make it grey <laughs> uh, polish that knob a little bit so it shines so that's very nice. Shiny little knob. <laughs> You'll get your turn. You'll get your turn. Oh, I just got quite a lot of work lined up for me, you see. Or I might not see the forest, uh, I might not see the tree for the forest, if you know what I mean. Okay, maybe let's add some metallic garbage here. Like a panel of sorts. See, this is why layers are important. You can just easily, effortlessly, just work on uh, 
work on separate layers, you can work underneath objects, you can work over them, you can disable them, enable them, you change your mind. Your, your mind changes like a hormonal teenager, weather vein like like mine that you know I, I don't like this color after all I just want to change it I don't have to remake the entire sprite in fact I'm I think I it would be interesting to add a little dark edge like that so I'll just shrink it by two pixels here shrink it by two pixels here shrink it by two pixels here, shrink it by two pixels here, and color in that surrounding area with black. Deselect the center so I can shade this dark bit without touching the interiors. And add a little bit of edge there even out the coloring a little bit. You know, this, this way of drawing this makes things look like they have some texture. It, it's more natural, it's not flat like me. Well, uh, to be, I mean... Yeah, that, that looks quite a bit more natural. There's no unnatural ingredients here. Darken it a little bit. Yeah, that looks that looks fine to me. And then let's add a little bit more of these knobs here. This this uh, particular object is going to have a lot of knobs on it. There's Writing these a little bit, maybe. I don't know what they're gonna be. Maybe, maybe these are gonna be meters. Yes, they're gonna be some kind of gauges. I'll color them in with white and invert the selection, 3D drop shadow, opacity of 10, maybe, of, or 25, yeah, uh, 17. Yeah, that's perfect. And. Then I'll just add a little red pointer here and there. Okay, and some switches maybe. Switches here. Color them in too. And Add a little bit of shading to them, add some three-dimensionality to them. And I think it might make it look a little more three-dimensional if I actually had a three-dimensional shadow. Like, like this. There we go, that looks a little better already. In fact, I will make the bottom part even darker so that it is a different color than the shadow itself. It does not blend into it. Okay. In fact, now this, this, um, this thing also needs a shadow, so I will just do just that. If you do this by hand, it, it's always going to look a little bit more natural, and 
it might take a little bit more work, but it will improve your drawing skills a lot. Oh no, I think that's kind of blends it a little too much with the background. I will darken this edge here. Okay, uh, what else goes on this gadget? Might be interesting if one of the switches was uh, was red. I'll just take that, pick the color red, take the fluid fill tool, match non, blend mode, multiply. And I'm working on the wrong layer. I should be working on this layer. There we go, and I will brighten it up a little bit. There we go, one of the switches is red now, just like on that picture. And I'm not really sure about the wood covering the whole thing. Um, I might just make a metallic plate to cover most of the area, the wood is just gonna be at the top or the sides rather yeah there we go I'll just make that uh, plain grey color like that, I'm gonna use gradients to add a little bit of a shine to this thing Oops, I used multiply. I should use normal blend mode. Now it's a little bit brighter. Brightness. Mm, little bit less of a contrast, I think. And then shade the edges again. And you notice that the uh, tapes are tape holders are blending into the background a little bit there. I will I will fix that in a moment. Right, so I have these tapes here. In fact, I will promote the selection to layer, which means that I have created a new layer containing just the tapes, right? So now the tapes on this layer are redundant, so I will delete them and I will enable this layer again to so just so I can work on the uh, tape holders completely separately. And I will use the bevel effect because I'm lazy. And sometimes you don't have to do everything by hand, especially when it's a complex shape like a circle like this. Right, so I'm going to cast a shadow, quite a lot of opacity, I think. Oops, I don't mean to change the color of the shadow, it needs to be completely black. Okay, and yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll increase the blur a little bit. Okay, that's that's good. Maybe make this thing a little darker. I don't know. Maybe brighter actually. Yeah, I think white looks pretty good. I'm a big fan of white. Okay, so now I'm going to create a little center thing on on the middle. I just created a circular selection. And I'm using the bevel tool just to create a little knob that this whole thing spins around and then control C, control E to copy paste it. There we go. Actually this wooden part also needs a border of its own, so I will do that with 3D inner bevel layer. And I might actually enhance it by hand. Polishing some wood again.
There we go. And that noise. Okay. Okay. I think that this bit will have to become either brighter or darker to distinguish it from this uh, different parts. It's too dark, you can't really see shit. Uh, it's brighter, it looks nicer, yes. Okay. All right. And now that's going to be centered as I combine all the layers to move this thing down. It's pretty big actually like if it's an object that you're supposed to pick up then then you would probably make it smaller, but let's see, let's see, let's see if we can just resize the whole thing and just fix up the pixels a little bit. Just creating a smaller version of this, if it's a item that you're supposed to pick up or something. And then just... A little bit of definition to this little thing here. Maybe let's replace that details on that side with the smaller, easier to see details. And there's some weird shit going on here, two dark bits. Actually, let's just make the centers completely dark because nobody's gonna see that detail from those little things. make the tape completely black too, so that we can clearly see what part is tape and what is not. Okay. No, I think that's a nice gray color. Sixty four by sixty four layers merge all. Oops.
so let's give the whole wooden area a clear wooden color so that it's not going to disagree with our palette too much. There we go. Let's see how this thing agrees with the palette. Very nicely. Let's do the same for the wooden bits on this side. Let's color them with color picked from the palette, Wolf 3D palette. Load palette. That's very nice. It doesn't lose almost any of the color. So there is a magnetophone or whatever it's supposed to be. You know one thing? I haven't actually saved any of these images for the whole duration of this stream, so I might like do that or something. I'm very fortunate that Painter Pro hasn't crashed on me yet because it it usually does a lot. Especially when I try to undo anything. I avoid using the undo feature because this program is so antiquated that it just it just doesn't work properly anymore. Okay, they're all saved now. Oh, there we go. What am I going to draw next? Also, does anybody actually want these sprites for themselves? Because I, I'm not going to have any use for them, so anyone who requested them, one wanted to make them, can have them. Sure. Metal walls and the two thingies. Here's the second then. An actual sun from up close, like, do you mean the surface or the sphere? Okay, I've sent these textures to you. That might be interesting. So I will draw a sun. Pay attention, I'm going to do this very quickly. Okay, let's use the grid as a guideline. I'll just use 32 by 32. So I know where the center point is. Make a circle using anti alias and see you later. You, uh, you have fun. Polish your wood later. Okay, so now I have this blob here. What am I gonna do with it? Again, I'm tempted to use my filters, but I don't think everybody has a noise filter, so once again, let's resort to the ordinary good old tools. So 
just a normal brush with a density of maybe 25 and let's pick yellow as the foreground color and a dark red as the background color opacity of maybe 15 size of maybe 32 let's just start adding blotches here and there And let's change the mode to screen mode and make the size a little smaller so we can add a few bright blotches here and there. Actually, I'll change the color to white for this. And I will increase the density considerably. No, not now. I'll just use yellow. It looks better. Maybe a lighter yellow. Remember, it's screen mode in Blend. Maybe that's the, those blotches are a little too big. I will use push brush with a density of 28 to erode them a little bit. And some darker bits as well. I will use multiply with dark red with it. Very gentle effect. Uh, maybe there's here is a bit of darker, here is a bit of darker maybe. Okay. Uh, select none. Now I'm gonna duplicate this whole layer and I will blur it and I will color it I will color it red and I will set this to lighten and in fact let's let's blur it even more blur more and more and then I'm gonna duplicate the layer again actually I'll use screen Merge all these layers, new raster layer, measure one of these colors, and then there's like little bits like ejaculating out of the sun. So I was just gonna like uh, use the one pixel white brush and manually do these ejaculations here. on a new layer naturally so I can configure it later. Now I'm gonna set it to screen. Might be a little too bright, a little too far as well, so I'll just use the eraser tool to lessen that effect. Okay. Maybe it still needs a bit more of that red glow around it, so I will just, in fact, I'll just make a new layer and paint red with a big fuzzy brush manually. I'll make it, make it a lighten effect. It's a little more uneven now. Maybe a bit more around these ejaculations. I 
I'll see you later, Nip. Might be slightly too dramatic, so I'll darken them again. Push Bros is your friend. Saves a lot of clicking and clacking between colors, measuring and painting and measuring and painting. Now there's this one thing left. I think let's merge the whole thing and let's darken it a little bit because No, if I if you use gamma correction it changes the tone a little too much the red. So let's use curves. Let's use curves to change the change the brightness where we want to change it. We don't want to change the red colors to be any darker than they are. We just wanna change those bits in the orange area. without changing anything else. Uh, we're not really getting the bits that I wanted to. No, I'll just I'll just use manual Actually, I sh I'll try to use uh, modify select color range to do this. Um, there we go. And just manually darken these bits. Yeah, that's more like it, I think. Let's just resize this original image into 64 by 64 and see if there's actually a whole lot of difference between them. It's pretty similar. Uh, the only thing, of course, is because this got resized down. It lost a lot of the detail on it. Let's see if we resize it without a uh, filter. Just pixel resize. So you can see it's almost identical now. So I hope you're happy with that sun. I will save it. I tried to make it as realistic as it gets. So, uh, anyone still watching uh, wants to request a sprite? Oh yeah, I might as well check if these things tile. Yeah, they do. I'm very confident when I'm making tiling textures that they're they are gonna tile, but 
it's good to always check check that they indeed do Christmas tree okay that's pretty simple Let's check what, what colors we have at our disposal. Yeah, but I just created like a blob of stuff underneath that uh, represents the overall shape of the tree and I shaded it and then I'm gonna create some rough looking branches that uh, belongs to a coniferous tree, like just spiky little things. In fact, I'm gonna use a little bit of brown here underneath those branches. I'm gonna create a new layer underneath them and then like add it add it here. Combine those two layers. Now it's gonna move this stuff to the side. And starting from the left side, I will just keep copying this thing. Flip this around. I'm gonna copy it around a few more times. And I'm just gonna copy a giant chunk of this shit. Uh, all this side, so I'm not copying over it. Copy chunk here there, copy a chunk here, there, maybe trim this a little bit, trim this a little bit, move it up, move it up, move it inside, and then add stuff to the middle. Actually, before we do that, we might as well darken the... I'll, I'll copy this little straight bit that's going to go down the middle, and darken these ones a bit. Lighten them on the left side because light is usually coming from the left side and change the modes to lightness because otherwise we're gonna mess up our colors. And 
No, that, this this stuff down the middle, probably starting from bottom. Actually, I, th I think you know. Let's let's add a shadow effect so that the branches are more clearly differentiated from each other. There we go. Now I'll just keep copying that. That's a little shadow effect there. Make the layer effect into dissolve, I think. So we can kind of randomly ditter some pixels here and there. Duplicate that original tree, maybe a little bit more of the original, a little less of the new stuff. How much definition do I want for all these branches? Not much. Though now the problem is the wooden color that I had underneath is going to be blended into the uh, into the uh, green and let's just change this to luminance so now the now the um, brown bits are going to stay brown it's just going to change the brightness like this yes you should play around with layers a lot because layers are so useful maybe around there Okay. I think that's a uh, good tree base to work with. I mean, to be honest, this is kind of shit, but who cares? It's going to be covered with decorations. Like these red balls that people always hang on Christmas trees. Let's have one that is a different color. Let's just change the red to a blue, I think. There we go. Actually, I think we don't have that shade of blue in Wolfenstein, so let's change the blue to a deeper blue. There we go. I think that will agree with the palette a little better. No, I don't think I'll add a drop shadow. That's fine as it is. Actually, I might I might shrink the entire tree so that I have some space left for uh, 
left for a star at the top, so I'm just going to delete the entire center bit of the tree. Just fuse the two halves like that. And I'll, I'll delete a few few balls from here and there. Yeah, I like deleting balls. Okay, that that's looking pretty good. Combine all this layer crap and just. Now let's uh, let's add a uh, background because I totally forgot to mess around with that. So let's just change the background color to something more appropriate. We can actually see how much tree there is at the edges where it's all dark. Okay, and then let's add a base to the tree. Because it's not just floating in the air randomly. It's going to be it's going to be coming from it's going to be coming from this trunk. It's not much trunk visible, so I'm just gonna be, be very pretty lazy, there's just some bark, ba barely visible. A little more of the bright color on the left side, a little bit less on the on the right side. Maybe I'll, I'll move this blue ball up a little bit, relieve it. of its plight. There we go. Now for the star. Actually, let's correct the direction of this tree a little bit and center it. There we go. No, let's I will darken this star that I just drew and then copy paste the original bright version on top of it so it gives it a little bit of a tree dimension. Oh you are you are correct. A uh, Christmas tree with with no persons around it. Maybe it's a maybe it's a Soviet Christmas tree. Yeah. That would explain it. You know, kind of fits with the red star and everything. 
Let's see how how this works with our Wolfenstein 3D palette. Not too bad. There, it's it's missing the really dark green shades. So we might have to just I'll just select all of the green stuff. Select color range. Uh, let's select green areas. Uh, let's bring up the brightness for them a bit. Uh, not that much. Maybe, maybe there. That's fine. Now let's see how it works with the palettes. That's much better. That's much better. We have the shades of gray. Uh, um, shades of green for the. Um, for the tree now. Yes, that's that's that is a tree that I can be proud of. I don't know what else Christmas. Oh yeah, I think they have like that. That's um, thing going around them. That's kind of like. decorative thing which I don't know the name of but I will draw it anyway Let's give it a little bit of a shadow, I think. Uh, there we go. On a new layer, and I will just select, or rather deselect the uh, purple area, invert the selection so only the purple area is selected, and go back to the shadow layer and press delete so I can delete all the transparent shadow the stuff that is actually outside of the tree and as a matter of fact I might just brighten this whole thing a bit yeah some lights would be a pretty good idea I, I reckon um, some candle or something Let's see what what color are we gonna use for that? Uh, this and this, yes. I don't know if this is exactly how Christmas lights look like but it'll do I guess little wire showing here and there is going around the tree. Mm. 
Now we have lines on our tree. I don't know if they look like anything, but uh, they're they're pretty massive lights actually. But uh, I don't know if they actually look like lights. You know what? Let's just let's just let's just select that outermost thing. Delete that color, so we are left with just that small small part that looks more like a light let's just also fix that missing pixel between them persons under the tree okay Let's separate these two presents into their own layer. Promote selection to layer and delete them from this layer. Okay, now they are on their separate layer. And move this on the background. Actually, oh yeah, the tree already is fused into the background, so I can't do that. But I can do this. Select the uh oh yeah i'm operating the wrong layer so let's go to the bottom layer i want to select the whole purple area like that you can see that's the area i'm selecting now and then i'll just invert the selection now i have the shape of the tree and i will delete the shape of the tree from the layer of these two presents so now they are behind the tree 
a lot easier if I had preserved the original layer, but whatever. In fact, I will, I will change the position of these two trees. So that this is over here and this is over here. Maybe I will lift them. Oops. Lift. No, I won't do it. No, I actually I will. I will. Just delete. S delete one pixel from down there, so it looks like these gifts are a bit more on the background. Yes, yes. Maybe darken them a little bit. We darken the tree itself. Again, just to let the purple area invert it. Now I've got the shape of the tree it's selected. We'll darken the tree behind the presence a little bit. Okay. I think that is a fine looking Christmas tree. Let us let us see how it agrees with our palette pretty well. I think we don't need to change anything about the colors there. It just fits perfectly. Okay. So I think I might call it a day here unless somebody really wants me to draw something. Something more. I hope any uh, anybody who was watching uh, learned something from this. Maybe next time. I think this stream has already gone on for... Uh, how long has it gone on for? I can't actually see it, but it's probably gone on for several hours. You are most welcome. Just tell me if I'm going too quickly or if you want me to show you some kind of particular technique for doing anything. And I, I will be able to do just that. Anyway, I think it's time to close the stream and call it a day. Thanks for watching.